Hello everyone. Well, I've got a cheapy supermarket vacuum to look at today. This is a Goblin Upright Vacuum Cleaner from Asda. This has been hanging around for months in my house and it's high time I unboxed it. it says on the box it's lightweight at 4.8 kilograms. It has a 6 meter power cord and a 2 in 1 crevice tool. What more could you need? Let's get this unboxed. I can't see this on Asda's website anymore so it's possible that it's been discontinued but this particular style of vacuum cleaner I've seen under many different brands including Tower, I think Beldre, uh, even other supermarket owned brands as well. It's Well when I show you it you'll recognise it because I think even Russell Hobbs, there's lots anyway. But this particular one is branded Goblin and it's a GVU 401R-18 Upright Vac. So first thing out is a handle, which is partly metal. There's some screws attached there, so I'll have to screw it to the cleaner I expect. Uh, it's the wrong way up, but never mind. Well, that was quick, folks. <laughs> ah, that's good, though. We seem to have a spare filter. This type of basic budget-priced bagless cleaner, they often have this sort of pleated filters that require frequent maintenance, so it's nice to have a spare. And also, look, a spare belt. So that's good. That's a big tick. Here we have the <laughs> two-in-one crevice tool with a brush. It's not too bad, that's fairly soft. Nothing nothing for delicates. I wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't do my TV screen with it, but for lampshades and your shelving and things, it's okay. Because that, that comes off completely if you want it to. Or we can just push it back. To use the crevice tool so I think that's the only accessory you get with this right well here it is very cheap I don't know how cheerful it is we'll get it assembled and switch it on you get two screws with this cleaner but I'm assuming one of the screws is spare because I only require one screw to fix the handle and you need a Phillips or posi drive screwdriver. So just pop the handle in with the uh, red trim facing front. Line up the hole. We don't need to line it up, it is lined up more or less. Just try and hand tighten first. And then I think that is more or less the assembly completed. Don't over tighten. That should be enough. This is the uh, flexible stretch hose. Doesn't appear to be long enough to reach up the stairs. I'll check that shortly but I can say now it's not going to reach up a standard flight of stairs. Very short. But we need to hook the hose over the hook at the top like so and then insert this end of the hose into the hole here. It's not just a push fit, it's a twist fit. So you need to line up this little notch here with a hole in the base and turn it until it locks into position. The mains cable stores around the two hooks at the back of the cleaner. The two-in-one crevice tool fits into the slot here. And here's the Goblin fully assembled. And what an amazing piece of cleaning technology we have here. It puts Dyson to shame. The amount of research and development that's gone into this Goblin cleaner is unsurpassed. It is the ultimate cleaning system for your home. I'm being a little bit sarcastic, folks. <laughs> It's like a toy. It might pick up <laughs> and it might last whoever buys one of these a year or two, if you're lucky, if you look after it. 
but um, yeah, it's it's not up to much, folks. I have to say, I was hoping to sell this on after I finished this video, but I'm not really sure. My reputation on eBay, I don't really think it could take a hit selling this. It's very light, I give it that. Okay, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Well, here's the underside of the Goblin with the brush roll. And the brush roll has got two different types of brushes. The red brushes are very soft, very, very soft. And then the grey brushes are a bit stiffer. So I think the thinking behind this is the soft brushes will be good for hard floors and the harder brushes would be better for carpets. You've got a couple of little squeegee things either side to help seal the suction in. It's, it's all very plasticky. To change the belt, one, two, three, looks like there's four screws to undo to remove this base plate and then you have access to the motor spindle to fit a new belt. Got a little roller at the front, two wheels there. This roller moves up and down. There is a height control dial on the other side of the machine to enable us to adjust it for different heights of carpet. And then at the back, we've got two very scrapey plastic wheels. Here's the height control. It only seems to have two settings, high pile and low pile slash hard floor. There's no stops in between for different settings but possibly if you have it in the middle that might be suitable for medium carpet. For my particular carpet I think I'll select the high pile setting. Here's the dirt container. There's the little red button on the top that you press to release it for emptying and then to empty it we've got this catch. So you just flick that and hopefully all the dirt will fall out. We can take this apart and give it a bit of a clean if we want to. There's a little padlock, locked and unlocked symbol. Turn it to unlocked. Oh, it's a bit stiff. There we go. So you can clean this if you want to. And then this, un this comes apart as well. There's another section we can remove if it will allow me to. There we go. That shroud can be cleaned under running water and then here we have the filter which is washable which does need cleaning but as you saw earlier it does have a spare so while this is drying and it can take 24 hours to dry you can put in your spare filter so that is a good thing i suppose that will just twist out i'm assuming we'll just pull off there we go just pulls off clean that under running water yeah it doesn't uh yeah, it doesn't lock into position, it just more or less pushes on. That's it. Yeah. And then the shroud goes back on. That's oh, all. Yeah. No, it doesn't lock in position. You just have to hold it in place while you're putting the shroud back on, which should, if I line it up correctly. Oh, there is an arrow. There we go. That should, when that's locked in position. Oh, dear. There we go that should hold the filter in place. So that's about everything to show you with the bin. Pop the uh, shroud and filter back, line up the arrow to the unlocked padlock and twist until it's locked, close it up. We've got a HEPA exhaust filter here and this filter is again washable. So that should just come out. It's all very stiff. I mean, it is new. But this filter won't need washing as much as the filter inside the dirt bin. But maybe six months, once a year, if the cleaner lasts a year. But if you buy this from Asda, obviously this is really only available from Asda. You do have a one year guarantee. Keep your receipt. And if there's any problems, take it up with Asda. There is a technical helpline as well you can phone which is uh, useful I suppose. I think most people when they buy something like this they probably won't really bother to maintain it. It, You know they put it in the shopping trolley with their jammy dodgers and McCain oven chips and 
it's just something they might just bought as an impulse or they needed a new vacuum it's not something they would consider maintaining but even though <laughs> saying that some people who spend 600 on a dyson won't even know to maintain it even though you know there are instructions to maintain these things even if you spend 30 40 pounds on a vacuum if you maintain it it will last you a bit longer so keeping the filters clean you know preventing any blockages don't pick up any hard or sharp objects look after it and you might get a year or two out of it if you're lucky so there is another little filter as well this tiny little sponge filter you can rinse that that's just over the motor at the bottom but I think people who ring this helpline will complain oh it's not picking up anymore and I wouldn't be surprised it's the belt there are instructions of how to change the belt in the instruction book um, but there you go it's it is what it is folks I've not switched it on yet uh, but I think that time has come the top hook rotates so you can release the cable in one go and then to stop the cable from getting in the way there is a little clip just here at the back of the handle so you can clip the cable there to keep it out of harm's way because you don't want to be running over the brush roll somebody complained I, I laughed at this actually folks I think it was for a review for SIBO Felix most of reviews are five stars this person gave it one star no sorry it wasn't a Felix it was a SIBO X7 one of the things they complained about was the cord got damaged when they ran the machine over it you really can't help some people can you <laughs> I remember when I was a child reading instruction books, it always said, do not run the machine over the cable because it can damage it. It's uh, pretty obvious, really. Okay, I'm not sure if it's gonna switch on. It did. It's not too noisy, but it has to be under 80 decibels. Yeah, well, I'll give it a push. I've got it on high pile. <laughs> Let's see how it works. Completely empty. I did a big demonstration on this carpet yesterday and cleaned most of it up, but you never know, it might find some dirt that I missed. There's no button to press to release the handle, you just basically pull the handle back and press the uh, foot operated on off switch. <laughs> It's giving an odour of TCP for some reason. It is very hard to push. Obviously this carpet isn't the best carpet to demonstrate vacuums on. I'll get another piece of short pile carpet. So it's very hard to push forward and easy to pull back. But then again, I think the, uh, the head sort of lifts up when I'm pulling the machine back. It's sort of grooming the carpet, but looking at it, it's more like it's raking the carpet. You can see the individual brush marks. Oh dear, it's not very good, but what I am quite surprised at, and I often find this with really, really cheap vacuums when you first use them, they do tend to get out some dirt that your previous cleaners have missed. Because I can see in here, in fact, it has got some stuff. There was some black sand in the last demo I made in this room. And it has got, well, it's got a lot of fine dust, actually. Look at that. It has got some fine dust and there is black sand. And some glitter that was missed as well. This carpet does tend to hold onto the dirt and it takes a very good vacuum cleaner several passes to remove it what i'm going to do folks before i completely dismiss this vacuum cleaner is clean clean the whole living room with it and uh, 
see how much we pick up just from the living room. And then I'll bring in a, a piece of short pile carpet and actually put some dirt down on it just to see if there's any agitation. But yeah, mm, I don't think, I don't think this is going to be a cleaner I recommend. I've had enough, I've had enough. You know, I could do with getting some exercise, but really, a rowing machine would be better. <laughs> what I'm gonna try, folks, I'm gonna have to be fair to this cleaner. I'm going to remove, if I can, I'm not sure if I can, but if I can, I'm going to remove these two strips either side of the brush roll. And maybe when they're removed, it might be a bit easier to push. Okay, well, they slide out very easily and I'll be able to slide them back in before I demonstrate this on the kitchen floor. So let's see if it's any easier to push without those silly plastic strips. No, <laughs> doesn't make any difference at all. It's maybe even worse. But I have to say, it is finding some, some very old looking dust. Bit of hair as well, but that's, that's dust that's been in the carpet for a while, I reckon. But, oh. It's a, it's a lot of work. Right, well, I'll uh, attempt to clean up the rest of the living room and we'll see, <laughs> see if I've survived the ordeal. We'll see how much dirt it's picked up. folks if I had a gym membership I'd be on the phone cancelling it now because I don't need it all I need is this goblin that's all the workout anyone needs it's a full body workout you build up a great big sweat and you get a clean carpet what more can you ask for 
the ideal piece of gym equipment, the new Goblin. And if you buy two, you can hold one in either hand like that and, you know, uh, do this. Well, it's not very heavy. I'll give it that, it's light. It's light, if you've got a light vacuum, it's very light, folks. Relatively easy to push when it's off. <laughs> Listen to that. What a pile of poo poo. Well, we haven't, uh, <laughs> we haven't done the kitchen floor with it yet, have we? And I've not measured the suction. I should have done the suction on my suction gauge when it was empty, but before I go into the kitchen and sprinkle some dirt on my kitchen floor to see how well this goblin picks up, uh, we'll have a look at the dirt and, oh, has that been off all the time? I don't know. No, surely not. I think that's just, yeah, and then that's another thing. This keeps coming off. I think it was on during the videoing, wasn't it? I think it, let, let's try it without the suction. Oh, yeah, right, it's great. It's great without suction. So as long as you disconnect the hose, you will be able to push it. Now, to be fair, you know, I am being a bit cruel to this goblin. I did go and clean part of my hallway that's got a much shorter pile of carpets. In fact, it's the carpet that used to be in this living room and it moved easily, relatively easily. So, you know, some of the blame has to be laid at this carpet. So if you've got a very short pile of carpet, it might be okay. I'm gonna do a bit of a test on a short pile carpet anyway in a minute, but uh, let's have a look anyway. Whew. Was it worth it? Well, you know, it has picked up. Ooh, it's going everywhere. Apart from hair, I assume that must be hair from Daisy. I don't know. Oh dear, I'm gonna have to. There is a lot of, you know, I've been, I've had my fingers in a lot of dust for many years since I was a toddler. And I can sort of recognize when dust looks old, if you know what I mean. Dust that's been in the carpet for a while. And to me, that does look like dust that's been in the carpet for a while. But, uh, whew, you know, dear me. And that's with the uh, those little strips removed. I'll put those back on for cleaning up, uh, cleaning the hard floor. I'm just going to pick up the mess I've just deposited back onto the carpet. Okay, let's have a quick look at what uh, this cleaner measures on the suction gauge through the hose. It's a 750 watt motor. And to compare, a pneumatic Henry will measure at about 80 on the gauge. A 620 watt pneumatic Henry is 80. So I wonder what this goblin's going to measure. Well, that measured 60, which I suppose is respectable for a budget upright cleaner. So, um, yeah, not too bad, I suppose. Let's have a look at that filter, shall we, folks? How clean that pleated filter is after trying to vacuum one room. It's a lot of a lot of dust there. Look on the uh, on the shroud. It's my dust, so it's fine. I'll be fine, folks. Some of you are concerned that I put my hand in a lot of dust, but I'll survive. Bit of muck in there, look. Hmm, well, to give it its due, the carpet wasn't filthy, filthy, though. But there is, there is dust in there. I haven't used it for long, obviously, but you can see that after a week or two of regular use, that would soon clog up and would need uh, either brushing with a brush, 
or washing to maintain the suction. Okay folks, I'm in my kitchen and I've put down some dirt. I've replaced the plastic strips from either side of the brush roll and I've selected the hard floor setting on this Goblin Upright. Now it might be a bit noisier in the kitchen, so headphone users, just a heads up in case you want to retain some of the hearing you may have left after watching this video. Okay, I have no idea how this is going to perform, but it'll be very interesting to see. At least it'll be easier to push, I hope. Well, as you can see, not very good at all. One pass forward and back, and as I was pulling back the machine slowly, it was leaving all this mess. I don't know whether I want to attempt to clean up the rest of the mess on my kitchen floor with this goblin. I'm just worried about damaging the floor, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. And then when I've cleaned all this mess up, I'll tip the mess back out onto the entrance mat in my kitchen, which is more like a short pile carpet. And we'll see how the goblin copes with that. Well folks, it's not often that I abandon a demonstration, but I'm going to cut my losses with this one on the hard floor and use something far better to get rid of the dirt. Finally though, for the last part of the demo, I'm going to empty the dirt bin onto my entrance mat and we'll give the goblin one last chance to redeem itself. Well folks, I think I've had my fill of this Goblin Upright Cleaner. I think I can safely say that this is the worst bagless upright vacuum cleaner that I've ever shown you on my channel. And there's been a lot of competition, but this one takes the first prize, the gold medal. I wish I had a gold medal to put round its bin. This is an appalling vacuum cleaner. I don't think you can buy it anymore from Asda under the Goblin brand. But remember the shape of this, folks. You'll see this in other brand names. Tower definitely in a, a nice rose gold and black colour. It might look smart, but I think if it's anything like this, it'll be appalling. I, there's nothing I can say to recommend it. It's noisy. It hardly picks up. On a plush bile carpet, you need the strength of Hercules to push it. The hose keeps popping out and in fact, if I was to tug on that hose, I can see some of the glue coming away. It'll probably come away from the, uh, the handle end there. So I have absolutely nothing to recommend it. I can't sell it on because whoever receives this, whoever pays good money for this will not be happy. So what I'm going to do, folks, I'm going to have a competition. I don't know where, but by the time you see this, I expect whoever's won this will have will have won it so it'll be for UK only I'm afraid because I'll have to pay to have this shipped so I'll put a competition either on my Instagram or Facebook page and you can have this I'm so generous you can have this as a, a booby prize and you can say you can show this to your grandchildren one day 
and say, I've got Ibasic's worst upright vacuum cleaner. How's about that? So <laughs> there you go. It'll come with the box and the spare filter and the uh, spare belt, but you can have it. You might like it in your home. It's just not for me. And uh, I, in all fairness, I can't, I can't actually sell it. So I'm going to give it away to some very lucky person. So from the worst vacuum cleaner, upright vacuum cleaner to one of the best, I'm going to use my lovely SIBO Felix pet to clean up the mess left by the goblin. If you have any comments or questions about this thing, please comment below. And I'll see you all very soon for the next video. I'm off for a shower. I'm absolutely exhausted. Bye for now.